Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Today we're going to talk about cryptocurrency news. We're going to look at Federal Reserve. Can they print an infinite amount of cash? We're going to talk about inflation and is it going to hit the U.S. dollar as a result of this infinite cash that the Federal Reserve intends to print? And finally, the U.S. House of Representatives are proposing a digital dollar in order to distribute all of this cash for this massive influx or bailout of the U.S. economy as a result of this virus and pandemic that's affecting the entire world. So let's get right into it. Cryptocurrency trading for beginners, ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash that like button. It really does help us tremendously with the YouTube algorithms and promotes this station, promotes our channel. So help us out by smashing that like button. So I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. Um, and also always remember cryptocurrency involves a substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for every investor. Uh, the rest of this disclaimer, I'll leave it up to you to check out, but I strongly recommend you do. It is sound advice. The Fed's infinite amount of cash is the biggest argument for Bitcoin yet. The United States Federal Reserve has suggested it can print unlimited money. Here's what that means for Bitcoin. Federal Reserve Bank has an infinite amount of cash, says Minneapolis president, and this was during a 60-minute interview in the last few days. Um, and in that 60-minute interview, he claims that in order to prevent banks from running out of cash, they can print an infinite amount of cash and they can also deposit an infinite amount digitally. President of the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis, Neil Kashkari, said that the Federal Reserve has an infinite amount of cash in response to worries over the stock market collapse. Speaking on 60 Minutes, Kashkari said there's enough cash in the financial system and there's an infinite amount of cash at the Federal Reserve. We will do whatever we need to do to make sure there is enough cash in the banking system. And those in the Bitcoin industry think this is fascinating. Bitcoiners have always known that the fiat detached from some kind of peg, for example gold, always ends up with the abuse of money printing. Governments can't help themselves. And the current crisis just brought front and center <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> that money printing is one of the few tools they have left. The trillions of U.S. dollars that will be printed will be unprecedented in history. So, uh, Matty Greenspan, founder of Quantum Economics, agreed and said this is basically the reason Bitcoin was created. He said one of Bitcoin's main objectives is to counter the notion that money creation is inexhaustible. Bitcoin has a limit of 21 million Bitcoin where the newly minted Bitcoin halves every four years until minuscule amounts are produced. This process is known as the Bitcoin halvening. The next one is going to occur within the first week or two of May. Currently, every time a new block is added to the Bitcoin blockchain, 12.5 Bitcoin are rewarded to the miners. After the halvening, which is going to be approximately May... 12th or some somewhere some date in that in that uh, vicinity, vicinity um, that will be reduced by 50 percent and it'll go from 12.5 all the way down to 6.25 and so the miners will get significantly less reward for each block they're adding to the blockchain in fact hard coded into bitcoin's genesis block the very first bitcoin block ever made was an extract from the Times newspaper referencing the 2008 global financial crisis and, and crash. And what was relevant then is still relevant now. So uh, really, fiat has always been infinite, Shapeshift CEO Mark Voorhees told Decrypt. Central banks have never stopped creating it, and that is why fiat money or your U.S. dollar loses value every year forever. 
What changed now, though, is the rate of creation. They've decided to create as much fiat money as they can fathom. If people want to hold fiat in such a world, God help them, he added. So when you look throughout history and even current examples of every time governments have printed or created a a large amount of money, um, it's always caused those economies and those dollars to crash. You know, when, when Germany did it and it took a wheelbarrow of money to buy a loaf of bread uh, back in Germany just before World War II, their economy had, had collapsed and they were experiencing a thousand percent inflation and greater. Um, Venezuela has gone through the very same thing. One of the reasons why Venezuela is in such economic trouble is because they printed an enormous amount of cash. And so while this bailout may be a good thing in a very short-term basis, it also runs the risk of creating a significant amount of inflation. So Bitcoin paradigm shift, analysts fear inflation behind the brrr of fiat printing or printing dollars. The U.S. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell announces that it is preparing to buy unlimited amounts of U.S. bonds, mortgage-backed securities to prevent the economy from falling into depression, hence paving the way for another $2 trillion worth of economic stimulus. However, the stock market shows little strength after the announcement. The S&P 500 index closed 2.9% 2.9% lower at 22.37. Its record new low since December 2016 would be 21.91. And so the point I think we can get out of this is the S&P 500 didn't budge with the announcement of $2 trillion worth of economic stimulus. I think the reason is is because they understand that this stimulus may end up hurting the economy long term more than it helps it in the short run. With employment rates heading towards 30% mark and the world experiencing a lockdown due to the coronavirus, due to COVID-19, the stimulus is backed by bleak prospects of revenue. Moreover, while the stimulus might seem necessary at the moment, it is also increasing hyperinflationary risks. The current move by the U.S. Feds is an illustration of modern monetary theory, which allows countries like the U.S., United Kingdom, and Japan to print indefinite amounts of money without worrying about debt and inflation. And, and that's an interesting comment, that they don't worry about it, but they are causing it. So this is how free money looks like, but there is no such thing as a free lunch, is there? Society pays for this via inflation. The price To pay is inflation in the long run. Inflation expectations are popping and the long end of the treasury's curve is already pricing it in. So that's why the stock market isn't reacting as people would have normally expected to uh, the stimuluses and the bailouts. So... I think this is also building a much, you know, just like these two articles are kind of hinting at a little bit, but this is my opinion, and I believe that based on these things, it's it's building a stronger and stronger case for Bitcoin. You know, while we know that different governments around the world have had different economic issues, one of the reasons why Bitcoin is surging in Latin America much faster, much greater. Uh, the, the population in Latin America is adopting Bitcoin and cryptocurrency at a much accelerated rate when you compare it to the United States. But on the flip side, they don't have a lot of options like we have up to now in the U.S. You know, in the U.S., virtually everyone and many people's children have bank accounts, whereas in the rest of the world, there's some parts in the, of the world where only 40 or 30 percent of the population actually have a bank account. Some of that is due to uh, corruption at the banks. Some of it is due to uh, the banks are, are um, you know, the, they, the inflation rate of the economy. And uh, some of it is due to you have to go through a whole bunch of steps to prove your identity and other things that the less... Uh, 
uh, that, the, that the rest of the population doesn't have in order to qualify for a bank account. So there's quite a number of things that are affecting it. But in those same countries that have those kinds of issues, uh, cryptocurrency has been flourishing and has been growing dramatically because here's the odd thing. They may have a lot of people that don't have bank accounts, but for the most part, all of them have smartphones. Currently in today's world, there are 7.7 billion people on the planet alive today, and 5.3 billion people have smartphones. So it's really close to every five out of seven people alive today have a smartphone. And so those smartphones are getting used more and more for cryptocurrency. And so in countries where they may not want to have a bank account, they are electing to have a cryptocurrency account. And so that's why we see things like uh, local, um, oh shoot, local Bitcoins is what it's called. Local Bitcoins is flourishing in many of those countries that are under economic hardships. And also, you know, the part of the reason why Latin America and Venezuela and other, other countries in South America, uh, why their populations are adopting cryptocurrency at a much faster and higher rate than it's getting adopted in the United States is because they have a hair on fire problem called inflation they're trying to solve and many people are turning, an increasing number of people are turning to Bitcoin to solve that problem with. So the last thing I wanted to talk with you about is House Democrats are proposing digital dollars uh, in a move big for Bitcoin. Here's why. 11 years after Satoshi Nakamoto launched Bitcoin, some facts of the U.S. government have finally indicated that they are seriously considering the creation of a digital dollar, a move that many say could validate cryptocurrencies, especially Bitcoin. According to a Bloomberg Law reported released Monday, Democrats in the House of Representatives are seriously considering the creation of a system of digital wallets in which a digital dollar not Bitcoin, would be stored. This intent was revealed in legislative text published Monday by the House Financial Services Committee Chairwoman Maxine Waters. The text defined the term digital dollar as one of two things. A balance expressed as a dollar value consisting of a digital ledger entry to an electronic unit of value redeemable by an eligible financial institution. And so... Uh, this Bitcoin analyst, according to Nathaniel Whitmore, a cryptocurrency analyst, this move could help Bitcoin. He explained this theory by pointing towards a theoretical four-step process that may take place if this becomes reality. Step one, introduce digital dollar to ship stimulus payments. Step two, hundreds of millions of Americans get their first digital wallet. Step three, Trillions of dollars of stimulus, assuming the crisis goes longer than expected and has more of an in economic impact than expected, will lead to the debasement or devaluing of the U.S. dollar. And then finally, Bitcoin rises as many try to find a hedge against their devaluing dollar. So as people try and find some way to avoid inflation, they could turn towards Bitcoin and towards cryptocurrency. In fact, if you open up an account on most exchanges, many of the exchanges out there will also offer you a, uh, a basically a debit card. So you deposit Bitcoin into your exchange account and then they give you a debit card and it's basically a Visa or a MasterCard. You can take that debit card anywhere. You could go to the gas station today and buy gas with it because the gas station sees it as a debit card or a Visa slash MasterCard and it just it, it receives dollars as you're paying with Bitcoin. And so that two dollars worth of or that two gallons of gasoline that you buy today will still be approximately the same amount of Bitcoin maybe a month or two down the road. But if the U.S. dollar starts getting devalued at a dramatic rate, if inflation starts hitting the United States, as it has every single country ever in history that has created 
an unlimited amount of money. Every time, like when Germany started printing enormous amounts of money, it took a wheelbarrow full of money to buy one loaf of bread. When Venezuela did the same, it, their, their economy tanked. And it's happened every time around the world and throughout history that when governments went and created an enormous amount of money, they also saw that enormous amounts of inflation impacted uh, those countries. And so the $10 that you might have used to buy two gallons worth of gas today uh, might take $100, might take $1,000 to buy the same two gallons of gas later on. And while Bitcoin has been extremely volatile, most of its volatility has been in a positive direction. If you look at the history of Bitcoin, if you bought Bitcoin and held it for a three-year period of time throughout its life, there's so far there's never been a point in time where you would lose money if you bought and held Bitcoin for three years. You would have always come out ahead and sometimes very dramatically ahead. There are some years where you could have bought Bitcoin for a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin and saved it for three years and ended up with uh, anywhere from thirty thousand to forty or forty five thousand dollars with that initial thousand dollar investment. And so while Bitcoin is seeing dramatic increases in price, the U.S. dollar during that same period of time over the last ten years is not worth what it was ten years ago. Um, and we could be seeing that devaluing of the U.S. dollar uh, increase in a dramatic way with the amount of money they're starting to print and the amount of money that they're considering to print. So um, how can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions? Do you have any thoughts? Please leave your comments below in the YouTube channel. I would love to hear from you even if you disagree with me. Please share your polite disagreements below. Because as we share our, as you share your knowledge, you know things I don't know. As I share my knowledge, I know things you don't know. We'll grow smarter together. I want to grow smarter together with you. So please share your comments below. I would love to hear from you. In the meantime, how can I be of service to you? Also, like, subscribe, and hodl. And I hope that you have a fantastic day.